backs up on the other side of the basket. For Daryl Griffith, that is 32 points today. He is just capitalizing all the A's in all America. Still the zone pressure on one end. Now let's see if they drop back. Yeah, they drop back to the 2-1-2 two, two zone. McCray in the middle. Hanson. Arnold twisted his ankle, but he's okay. Uh, they Arnold save Arnold. Hanson. Crashes and foul. Over, over the back. shoulder. Boy, and the frustration on his face to know that he worked so hard. And Hanson just missed that little peeper inside. Lute Olsen, big center. Kraftsen has his third foul. Arnold, actually, there's where he twisted his ankle, but he had the shot the first time and just didn't get control of the ball. Watch it right here. Watch Kraftsen over the back. This is where he missed the chippy right here. Yep. And there he is, over the back. And look at how frustrated he is. And he realized he committed the foul. Now, both teams are in a one-to-one, -one, so Rodney McRae will get up there. He'll make one for his brother, the first one, the second one for himself. From the same high school, Mount Vernon, New York, the center Earl Tatum, the Marquette yeah. University. You've always said that's your favorite player. My, I think he had the most ability. I used to call him the Black Jerry West. He's an outstanding young man and a great player. Daryl Griffith, as he congratulates McRae, has number 35 on his uniform. That's significant because that is his high for the year, 35. And he's about to break it here in this most important semifinal. Well, a lot of time. Yes, seven minutes minute. left, and they have to make one of their famous runs. I think what's helping Louisville is the fact they're keeping the defensive pressure on. Therefore, they're not trying to protect any lead. They're going out for more. Iowa Market Square Arena. You see that defense form. Iowa on the attack. Hanson on the side. Ooh. Six for a fresh. Wow. 66 57 the score. Louisville by nine. For some reason, I keep thinking of both visits out of Iowa, and I keep thinking of miracles. Could happen. They've pulled off some big upsets all season long. One is even B this far in the tournament. No one counted on that. Now there were two kids from Ballard High that were on that NIT championship team in Virginia, and now at ease, they've got another teammate there at the chance. Hanson still, oh. and it is Brooklyn who scores, and Griffith fouled, I believe. Um, they no, didn't call no it, foul, Billy. No, foul. no, they didn't call it. I Watch thought it was this. automatic too, but he really went up. These like two birds flying above the mountaintops. Whee! You know, he was so quick with the dunk. If he, if he had delayed his hand action, that ball might have been blocked. All right, there it is again. There it is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's, I wouldn't like to be under the basket when that thing comes through. I wouldn't want to come down from the height they were when they were at the peak of their jump. A couple of pole ballers at 66 59, Louisville by seven. Less than six minutes remaining in the second game. UCLA from the West and Purdue of the Mideast will battle winners to meet on Monday night for the championship. Give Griff the ball and clear out. There goes Griffith. <laughs> He's human. Yeah, he tried to come in the back door that time. Kenny Arnold showing his quickness. Oh! By McRae. He vacuumed the rig of that one in. You can pin it on the board. Good play. And a turnover by Louisville. So Iowa comes out of that all right. All right. Let's watch this dunk as it comes up here on the screen. An unbelievable dunk. There's, there's Hanson. Big steal. Crooked. Now, watch their feet, how high they Well, they can't catch the feet in that one. Boy, he was so quick coming down. You see? Here's Arnold in the block by McRae. Just, he just sucked that one in. Yep. Good play. Ball on, ball on the way up. You can trap it on the board in college basketball. So a good play by McRae. Another one of those super pressures. Hanson loops one up. Crash this and rebound. Good play. It's 66 61. Iowa continues to hang in there tenaciously. Too many steps. And it'll be Iowa the other way, trailing by only five. Iowa took a big gamble right there. When the ball got to McCray, there was a three-on-one fast break opportunity the other end. He could not make the play. Well, I think that Louisville will sit back in their zone over favor Arnold from the outside. Gannon will have the shot. He's a good freshman. Maybe he'll hit another one. One, two, two zone now. In case he tried to play, re-injured his knee and not played since midway in the first half. Kenny Arnold, short. Oh. Griffith. Oh, what a recovery. And now it's three on one for Louisville. Berkman underneath. And 
He was fouled. Nice Michael. body control by Bertman that time. He knew the man was on his left. He turned around and put his rear end towards him, and he had a foul. You know, Bertman uh, is not a great leader, but probably can crack. He's up against so many great leaders that he has learned to break that kind of a shot because normally he'd get a jam down his throat every day at 3 o'clock. Steve Wake, meanwhile, the man who committed the foul, is the first in the game with four personal fouls. Cardinal cheerleaders watch as Bertman a chance at two. No fun going back to the dormitory with Spalding written all over your forehead. Every day. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Kids start making fun of you. Yes, it's in your face again. Looking for his eighth point, Bertman. It's above his average. Oh! Rebound. Mm -hmm. Arnold. That was, an that was an important mistake. Excuse me. I only need the ball three times a time. One, two, three zone. They did change the zone a little bit. They have Berkman out the top because Arnold's been hitting the jump shot. Just a subtle change, but it is a different defense than they started out in the zone. Oil on the side. Arnold's playing with a broken right thumb all season long. You see it's taped today. It's been that way all year. Very smart move by Denny Crum. This change in the zone really attacks the defense, the offense by Iowa better. Hanson. And Three with three minutes and 50 seconds left. Hanson's the key. They're laying off him. So if he can fill it up, they're in the ball game. Going over the four-point lead. They've led by as many as 11. They're going to get a five count here if they don't watch out. And the Griffith. Good save again by Daryl Griffith. It was not a good pass. But Hanson, some defense. Committed by Craftison. Reminder, it's a big basketball weekend. UCLA, Purdue to follow. Don't forget tomorrow, the AIAW, Old Dominion versus Tennessee. Monday night, the National Collegiate Championship will be decided 9 o'clock Eastern time. And I'd like to remind you that coming up on NBC, Bruce Jenner, O.J. Simpson, Sally Struthers, Joe Namath, and others salute to the common man engaged in some common and rather uncommon sports. That's our new program called Sunday Games. That'll be April 20th, a 90-minute special here on NBC. In front of the Louisville crowd, and at the other end, Lute Olsen has to try to discuss basketball to his team while his Hawkeye fans are are driving him crazy with their noise. Hey, when Derek Smith was up to this foul line, let's see if we can catch his shoes. And I'm not talking about shoes, Hoffman. He wears 15 and a half shoes. Well, he's a 68% free throw shooter, and if you're a Denny Crum, you'd like to have a little bit more solid. There they, they, look, are. they look like dry dots. <laughs> a big change in the lineup, too, for Iowa. They're going with a smaller team now. Krasinski, the only big guy out there, Brookings and Boyle back in with Hanson and Arnold. So look for that pressure. Smith coolly hits the free throw. He's the cousin of Garfield Hurd of the Phoenix Suns. There's a lot of talent in that plan from Hogansville, Georgia High School. Uh, that moves you back up to five. They get another important one, so it puts you back on the even number. But I, I, in watching him, I had about three or four games. He just seems to be a pressure player. Misses that one. He pinched that one off. 68-63 Louisville with three minutes, 15 seconds left in the game. Zone defense with Berkman out high. Brookins, the guys that on the wings have got the shot. Brookins, rebound. Hanson, good play. Lost, no foul. He lost it. Yeah, Wiley Brown deflected out of bounds by Iowa. You take a game like this, the coaches are coaching good, the players are playing good, so the referees are refereeing good. Lute Olsen thought there was a foul. I didn't think so, Dick. Here it is. Here's a replay. Let's watch. He lost the hand yeah, right there on the way up. The ball just kind of got away from him. I, I think Luke had a bad angle on that one. Well, you grab it for everything you can at this point. Graduate of small Augsburg College in Minnesota. There's Tony Branch in the ball game. Number 23, Branch is senior with the ball. Obviously in there for ball handling and foul shooting. Yep, he got him in the, the ice to foul shot. Now taking out Wiley Brown. Right, they've got three guards in the ball game now. Of course, Griffith's great for jumping ability allows him to move to the front court as he's played throughout his career sometimes. 
He's free. Jerry Eames scores, and he is fouled, and that'll be all for Craftsman. I like, if I get a moment here, Dick, I'd like to tell a story about what a great coach Denny Crum is. Against Texas A&M, they had the game won in overtime. Branch had two foul shots to make. Well, there's a shot. Of Here he is. He put play. that ball right up in Kraftsiffen's face. Some kind of play. Now, I don't think Darrell was going to pass it to him at first. He said, hey, I don't want you in among the trees. He still made the shot. Back to the story. Right. Yeah. Now, Branch had two foul shots. Denny Crump told him to miss the foul shot because he didn't want to put him in the same situation as in 1975 NCAA where the kick was 28-0. And missed the shot that would have gave uh, would have knocked U uh, UCLA out of the tournament. Now, isn't that thinking ahead? He wanted to take the pressure off the kid for the final. This is now, and then make all the rest of it. Make all the rest of it. Now, Lute Olsen has been forced to make a substitution with Kraftsen disqualified on his fifth foul. He left the game with 12, 10 of those in the second half. Now, remember the lesson that Terry Holland gave you in substitution in the Ohio State Virginia game. What we're seeing right now, Denny Crum's doing the same thing. He's putting in the bigger guys on the defensive end of the floor, and he's putting his quick guys on the offensive end of the floor. Lou Olsen was trying to call time, but his team did not see him. The play continues, 70-63 to score. Louisville with 220 left. Boyle, he has not scored. Oh, that was a man's rebound. Boy, that man run. went up there, he's right. Derek Smith and Iowa will get the ball on the turnover. Two minutes, 12 seconds left, and the Hawkeyes face a seven-point deficit. And he wanted the offense. The players in it couldn't get him in. But you notice Lenny didn't say a word to him. He didn't make faces or yell him about the pass. That's a good coach. Yep. Here you, now we're going to see a man's rebound here. <laughs> oh, he just ripped that one out. Not only from three Hawkeyes, but a couple of his own players. A lot of time left. A little bit over two minutes. We got a seven-point spread. Pass by Hanson. Good pass. Hanging at home is Kenny Arnold. He's averaging 13 on the season. He has 18 today. Nothing fancy, but he was one play ahead. As he caught the ball, he was just a ball. Oh, Eric Smith against the basket by Arnold as he rams it home for his ninth point. And it's still Louisville by seven. And time remaining on minute 40 seconds. Arnold with the ball playing for the injured Ronnie Lester. The star who had 10 points early as he and Daryl Griffiths were matching point for point, basket for basket. Lester re-injured his knee and has not played since midway through the first half. You saw the Smith dunk that is in play goal at seven-point advantage. Ronnie Lester's watching the game on TV in the hall. Oh, great hands. Uh-oh, look out! Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh! Griffiths had a chance at one of his patented dunks, but oh. couldn't quite get in front of the pack. There's three officials. The official waiting on that play transition, which means getting up and down the court in one direction or the other. Watch this right here. Great hands by Griff. I thought he was going to put one away right here. At the other end, Hanson can't hit. Rebound, Wade. Steve Wade makes it 72-67, and Lute Olsen calls timeout. Time running away from Iowa. They need five to tie, and just a minute and 12 seconds remain. The winner. He's putting in his better foul shooters like France, his quicker ball players. They'll foul quite quickly. They'll keep pressure all the way up court. And um, if any time the ball touches one of the smaller men's hands, which would be Smith's probably, they'll foul him intentionally. Also foul Berkson. Now what, what Denny has done, Dick, is, is he's gone, he's changed his lineup. He's got the offensive team in the ball game right now. He's taken Wally Brown out of the ball game. He's taken McCray out of the ball game. And he's gone with, actually, he's got four guards in the game right now. Tony Branch, one of them, and he quickly moves into the four court. Griffiths, oh, what a pass. Griffiths with another assist. He has a half dozen of them, and Jerry Smith with a basket for the final minute, and Louisville apparently is trying to represent one of the teams in the finals. Brookens connects in a hurry, and timeout Lute Olsen. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Right now, and, and talking about that offensive team that Denny Crum has in the game, what he would count on is at a foul, and if there is a foul, look for him to put the defensive club back out onto the floor. Jerry is ahead to Smith, 45 seconds, 44. They've got a foul. They do, and they're not. 40 seconds remaining. Louisville has a five-point lead. They've got a foul. Yeah, and they foul Griffith. Hanson finally grabs Cheryl 
Griffith. Now, automatically, here comes the defensive team into the game. McCray, Wiley Brown go to the sidelines. Out goes Branch and Eve. Had the pleasure, gentlemen, of flying to Indianapolis with the Wizard of Westwood, John Wood. You know, there was a time where Denny Crum and John Wood weren't uh, exactly friends when uh, Denny left for Louisville, but now they are the best of friends. And Coach Wood said, you know something? Denny Crum has been a superb coach this year. I think it's his best job ever. Okay. Cool hand, Luke. He uh, does his thing. He's private. He's a private type person. He likes to play golf. He likes playing gin rummy. And it looks to me, at the present time, with 36 seconds left, that Louisville has the pole position and receives the second flag. That's right. Or better yet, they've got, they're going to play your old Kentucky home, and they're in the derby. They're in the final run Monday night. Yeah. There, there you saw an interesting thing that Lou Dawson just did. He called the four remaining players over to the sidelines, used the 60 seconds, which he has to get a new player in the game, to in effect get a free timeout with his four players. They never came off the court. Now he goes ahead and makes the substitution. Al, it's interesting. You made the comment that Lute Olsen had one big card in Craftsison and Wade. He had 10 fouls. He has used all 10. Both men have fouled out. Wade leaves with nine. But at this point, he doesn't need height. He needs quickness, and he needs some turnovers, and he needs for Griffith not to make this free throw. This is a big free throw right here. If he makes this thing, it's curtains. You know, really, you go back to that first half, he had Boyle 0 for 7 and Brookings 2 for 8. That's what killed him. Griffith dribbles it in. He now is 5 out of 6, and he's 2 points shy of his all-time career high of 35 points. I would say they're in victory lane at the Indy 500. <laughs> You've been reading. Woo! 76, 69, Louisville. It appears the Cardinals are going to flap their wings tonight and wait for UCLA or Purdue to decide who will oppose them for the championship. Arnold makes it 76, 71 in relief of the injured Tony left. Kenny Arnold, just a sophomore from Calumet High in Chicago, has played an outstanding game and leads the Hawkeyes with 20. But this may be the easiest. Shall we say it together? The MVP is Darrell Griffith, Louisville. $1, Louisville's $1. living legend from the River City of Kentucky. A thousand dollars from Cement Track 2, the University of Louisville. Darrell Griffith, 34 points today. Brilliant. All-American. Last week when we had a hard time making that decision, we told everybody we were so wildly ground and Alvin vote for him. Inside to Berkman, and he'll get it right back out. They don't need points. They need to kill the clock. It's down to 16 to 15, and a foul on Brooklyn. Four fouls on Vince Brooklyn. At the line, Jerry Eves, a 67% free throw shooter. And here again, Denny Crum will put a big man in as he anticipates the defensive role. Griffith goes out. Oh, what a game. By Daryl Griffith. He gets a standing ovation from the Louisville crowd. I think he should get a standing ovation from the entire crowd. I don't think anyone realized he walked out. He did it like everything else, so softly and subtly, and no one realized he left the floor. He does everything in a low profile. Jerry Eves connects. 77-71 Louisville. There he is. There's the man. We'll see you Monday night, fella. He wasn't too smooth on taking the bottle top off. That's about the only thing he did too easy. 78-71. Eve now with eight points in the game. Arnold. Right now you don't want any foul. Make a Brooks, it off the field. Lay off the mark. Hanson. Oh, he couldn't help it. He tried not to foul. Wiley Brown fouled him, and it stops the clock with now five seconds showing. And Hanson at the line. We're going to be interviewing Denny Crum, the winning coach. We'll try to get Darrell Griffith. We are hoping to be able to locate Ronnie Lester, the great star of Iowa. Griffith back in as the Cardinals begin to give the high five as they celebrate their 32nd victory of the year. They've lost only three. They're on their way to the finals. Louisville, despite its great basketball program and its trips into this tournament, has never gone to the final game. Well, they've made it in 1980. And try to cut the lead. 78-72. And what a tough group of Hawkeyes from Iowa. And how proud their fans must be of this team that played so well and so competitively without their star, Ronnie Lester. Well, at the uh, press interview yesterday, the seven of them were up at the stand, and they just acted like perfect gentlemen. You were there with me, Dick. That's right. You know, let's, let's just reflect again, Al. 
the importance of Lester to this Iowa team. With counting today's game, without Lester, they were a 500 team, eight and eight. With him, they were 15 and one. So it's just not an ordinary loss when that man went out of the lineup with a re-injured knee. As I said at the top of the show, I was down at San Juan. I I watched those three great guards were playing with me Bobby Knight, where they won the gold in the Pan Am game. And Ronnie Lester, in my opinion, was the best. He's top shelf. He goes through the sound barriers. He's top on the chart. And um, whatever pro team ends up with him, got a true gentleman. Denny Crum, his assistant coaches on the sidelines, Bill Olson, Jerry Jones, Wade Houston, as they celebrate Crum's biggest win. You know, he had a great team in 75. Many felt he should have won it then. And he ran into John Wooden in his finale. And somehow the wizard pulled one out of the hat, got Crum in overtime and defeated him, and then went on to win in that memorable game in San Diego. And Denny Crum, his assistant for so many years at UCLA, is going to the finals himself this year. Griffith misses. But Derek Smith got the rebound, and he was fouled. And Smith, with two seconds left, will go to the line for a pair. Nice feeling out there for the winners. And the losers feel bad. There'll be, uh, there'll be some tears in the locker room after the game. But come Monday or Tuesday, then they realize, hey, I got to the final four. That's what it's all about. It's not just the championship, in my opinion. I know in the coaches, to get the if he doesn't win, you only get yeah, one chance. You only to go. get one ch one time there, and that's all she wrote. Now Griffith comes out, and the entire crowd here at Market Square Arena. Griffith going down to shake hands with a Iowa team, Lou Olson. Yeah. There he is, an All-American in action, and the crowd applauds. Dick, he didn't have any pit stops today. Oh, what a game. 34 points for Gerald Griffith. Derek Smith tacks on a little crossing. 79-72. There's another high five. <laughs> they lead the league in that, don't they? Yeah. Will it be Purdue or UCLA that plays Louisville on Monday night? Will the Rockets sink the aircraft carrier? Oh, 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 Ron Foster <laughs> against Joe Barry Carroll. The freshman against the senior. And out comes Derek Smith, 43. Wiley Brown, Roger Berkman embrace their colleague. And with two seconds left, it's academic. Kenny Arnold's final shot. And the game is over. The University of Louisville, led by Daryl Griffith, are in the final. 80-72 over Iowa. exude all of that joy yet. He still has one game to go. Denny Crumb's Cardinal. Oh, they be here smile. again Monday night. There's a smile. Inside they're smiling. Griffith finishing with 34. Sutton Bailey with the other final totals. 20 points for Kenny Arnold to lead the Hawkeyes. Lester had 10 in the first half before his denture. Brookins with 14. Francisco with 12. And Louisville along with the 34 from Griffith got 14 from McRae, 13 from Smith, and 7 from Berkman. Okay, the winners are with Billy Packer and...